Hey everybody, welcome back to the Metal Mill 52 workshop. My name is Bill and we are working on some live steam locomotives here. This is my Allen Mogul. I just show this so you can get a little contrast here with the cylinders and the valves there. My buddy Fred set the valve timing on this. It's a Stevenson valve gear and the LBSC Titch that we're working on now is a little tiny three and a half inch gauge locomotive and it uses a slip eccentrics or you could go the extra mile and build in a Walshertz, a Walshertz however you say that, gear. But I decided to go with the slip eccentrics. So the rest of this video will be sh showing how to set the valves, which there's page 89. I went ahead and made notes so I could easily follow along and I've done both sides. I think I've got it right. <laughs> we'll know for sure when we actually put air to it, which would be the next thing, building the piping. But I um, thought I'd go ahead and just put this together because I don't remember seeing a video. I know Keith Appleton has a lot of good stuff about setting valve timing, but I don't remember seeing one with the slip eccentrics um, on an LBSC titch anyway. But if there is, I apologize, and maybe at least I'm adding to the overall body of knowledge. So I hope you all enjoy this video. If, if you are an experienced builder and you see that I'm doing something wrong, please let me know because I've never set the valve timing on a slip eccentric locomotive before and I've never actually set the, the, timing, the valve timing all by myself before on any locomotive. So I'm, I'm coachable and I'm wide open to feedback and criticism. You're not going to hurt my feelings if you have a suggestion or a thought. Okay, thanks everybody. Look forward to hearing from you. And just to show you real quick, yesterday after I finished and uploaded the uh, video that I just posted last week, I took this side apart, cleaned up the set screw here, I put packing in this gland here, trimmed a, a little bit for some more clearance for motion, and also tried to drill and tap this hole for a 256 screw. And I say tried because I tried and failed. I broke the dang drill bit off in there and I could not tap it out so there it still sits and this one may stay that way kind of like LBSC described it's pretty aggravating that that happened but I for the life of me I couldn't get it tapped out I may try getting a 16th inch carbide drill bit that'd be the only uh, carbide end mill that's the only thing I can think of that would work to drill that hole out and not damage everything else so we'll see but getting ready to do the same thing on the opposite side. Let me flip it around and show you real quick. Need to shorten. It's just nice in the daytime here. But take this all apart so that I can drill and tap this hole here, put packing in here, and do a final check of all the fitment and everything to get ready for setting the valves. I'll, uh, I'll be working on this right now and get ready for the valve operation. Well, broke the tap on this side. This is the left side cylinder. So I just ground it flat with the, uh, with the Dremel tool. Kind of aggravating since I was trying to do something different, but oh well. It's exactly what, L well, close to exactly what LBSC called for with driving a pin through there. So I'm just, I'm not going to fight that anymore. I'll just let it be. All right, I've started working on setting the valves on the titch. Got it set up on blocks, got the steam chest covers removed and um, a hex key for removing the set screws, loosening the set screws. The first thing I did was they you want, they want you to set the valve arms up and down like the, exactly opposite each other. So the outer ones are perfectly up and the inner ones are perfectly straight down. So I've done that. And then the next thing to do is to loosen this or actually remove the valve rod for adjustment so that the valve will be in the basically the center position they say take your move the move the um, wheels by hand through let's see if i can show you this the uh, to get the the upper or the valve arm in the center of its operation so you can see it goes backwards there a few degrees forwards a few more degrees and right about there by eyeball is probably the center 
of the movement. Actually, let me take that forward pretty far. Doesn't go quite as far backwards as it does forward. So slightly forward, I think, is the center part of travel. And then to set the valve so that it's completely in the middle of the steam chest. So you can see that right now this one has got a port that's completely uncovered so the valve needs, needs to get moved this way. So I'm going to undo this rod and then crank the valve forward using the screw. So we'll set it to, to the middle. Alright, I'm hopeful this shows up but maybe it, it will make sense. But if you can see in here right now the the um, the arm is in the upper part of its travel, the center of its travel, and I've adjusted the valve so that it's completely, it's right in the middle. In other words, it's equally covering the intake and the exhaust port. So as I rotate it through by hand here, it's a little difficult to see because the oil, let me see if I can blot some of that oil away. There you go. All right, you can see one of the ports there. It's uncovered, and I rotate it back. Now both ports are covered, and I keep rotating it, and the forward port is uncovered now. And it's they're both. The beautiful thing is that they both uncover equally. In other words, so I'm confirmed confirming that the valve is in the center part of the port area because the uh, like I said, they uncover equally by the full rotation so that's an important part so both of them are at the same setting now and now i can start i think the next step is to adjust the slip eccentrics the next step in setting the valve timing is to set the piston rod piston at the front dead center so the piston is as far as it can go and then loosen the set screw on the stop collar and then rotate this by hand until the, the valve is as far forward as it can go. So it's a little tricky, but it actually did work when I rotated this valve. What's bad is where I put the set screw, it's the hole for it is way back here underneath. So it's good that I've got these things up on blocks. I'm going to rotate a little bit more. See, I think I've got it to the forward most position right now because I could observe the movement and I've moved it just a little bit more by hand and it hasn't gone in. okay there we go it's gone all the way back I'll, I'm going to bring it around by hand all the way one time that way I can reaffirm the position and hopefully this will get picked up on the camera and you can kind of see what I'm talking about so I'm rotating it around the stop collar is what moves the, or is what the pin eccentric runs into. All right. So it went all the way back. Now it's moving forward. It's about in a neutral position right now. It's a little bit of a fiddly job, y'all. But there's very few videos of stuff like this, so I figured this would be helpful. Okay, so as I move the stop collar forward, it's moving the valve ever farther forward. Man, that's fiddly, tricky. All right. Getting there bit by bit. I think that's just about as far as it's going to go. Anyway, I'm going to fiddle with that. I don't want to make you watch the whole thing, but so what I'm doing is I rotate this. I'm looking at the valve position up here. Can y'all even see that? Let me tilt the camera. Valve position here, forward in the steam chest. So when it's to the top of its travel, then I'll tighten that set screw down. Okay, I hope this 
part shows up on the video. I'm looking straight down. My head is uh, basically right over the camera, so it's easy for me to see the black lines, which is the you know the cracking of the port. And I'm doing the check right now. So I've got the I've rotated the wheels through by hand, and right now the connecting rod is at the back dead center, and it's just starting to crack. You can just see the black line for the back of the port. And then rotating it all the way through to front dead center. It's easy to feel the front dead center. You don't even, on the Allen Mogul you had to measure that. But right now, I mean, I'm right at the front dead center here and it's just cracking the front. You just see the little black line of the front port there. So I think we're good to go on this one. Now I need to repeat the process on the other side. And one more tip, if uh, if you're building one of these, it's now I see why LBSC had the putting the brake assembly in at the end because they're it's kind of in the way of the stop collars a little bit. I may actually drop the brake assembly down to blue it because it's starting to rust up. Probably should have done that before now anyway. But I think I have that set right. I'm gonna do the other side. It's a pretty fascinating process. Okay, I'm going to try to show this again on this side. This is the left-hand side bank of or cylinder. So I've got the right-hand side set, I think, perfect. Let's do the left-hand side. All right, I've, sent, I've already set the piston rod all the way forward dead center. So it's all, all the way as far as it'll go. I need to loosen the set screw on the stop collar here. All right, take it off a couple times, and then turn the stop collar by hand in the forward motion because it can go either way. I believe they want it to go forward yet until the valve goes all the way to the front of its travel. Let me see if I can use the little screw. Okay, so the valve is moving forward now. Continue turning slowly to the valve until it starts to return. It hasn't done that yet. What I think they mean and what I wish they would say, see it's uncovered the back port now, but I think they mean until it uncovers the the forward one because it's forward motion. I think that's right. And this is why I wanted to, to go ahead and publish this. And if for those of you that know what they're doing, because I really don't, um, if I've got this wrong, please let me know. Alright, continue cranking it forward until it uncovers. Alright, I can see straight down here. I haven't seen the little black line that they use to describe the uncovering of the port. There we go. Okay, now I see the black line. So I'm going to stop right there and tighten the set screw. I have to find the set screw. Of course, it would be right where the dang brake thing is. All right, my hands are going to be right in front of the camera, so I'm going to cut the camera off for a minute so I can move the camera out of the way and then tighten that set screw there. All right, now I'm going to do the checking thing on this side. Just kind of, I'm not sure what's showing up on the camera because I've got my little iPhone focused down here. I, I know the cylinder shows, but this is the cross check portion kind of from page 89 or 90. It says, now that I've got the crank pin thing set, it says, turn the wheels by hand in the forward direction and watch the valve. And note the position of the crank pin. When the valve, when the black line appears at the rear of the valve. So let's crank this forward a little bit. All right, the 
front port is all the way uncovered there. Black line at the rear of the valve. All right, there it is. And if, if the crank rod is exactly at back dead center, then the valve is set correctly. And sure enough, hey, the valve is right at back dead center. Let's see, let me, yep, there it is. Okay, yep, it's uncovered. Good, so that, that seems to check. Um, and then turn the wheel, let's see, we'll, let's crank it forward. I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. Go all the way to front dead center and the valve should just uncover at the front a little bit. Getting there, not quite there. There's about front dead center, yep, and it's just uncovered. So I think I've got it set correctly. Let's see, if all above is okay, turn wheels backwards. So, so the other end of the stock collar drives the eccentric. If the black line of the port shows at each dead center, then the setting is okay. All right, so let's try this backwards. All right, here now the eccentric is just engaged and we're not quite at back dead center that. Yep, okay, it's at back dead center and it's just uncovered the front port. Crank it all the way forward, get it to front dead center. Uh, it's hitting something. Might be the brake assembly. You gotta tend to that. All right, front dead center. Wait a minute, where'd it go? Shoot. It hit something and it kind of messed me up. All right, that is front dead center. Let's see. Hmm. I think I need to do a little bit more adjustments on here because I'm I don't have a port uncovering. Well, I'm not quite at front dead center just yet. No, I think I'm gonna have to adjust that one a little. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm supposed to be going backwards. Going backwards. No, that's forwards. She was okay. Backwards, back to the center. That's it. Yes, yeah, so we're uncovering the front port. Let's keep going in the same direction. And front dead center should just be uncovered here. Yeah, it's not. I'm going to have to adjust this one a little bit more, but that shows you the, the cross-check feature. And then hopefully that's been instructive about setting eccentric valves. Just to follow up, since it wasn't cracking just perfectly when I was doing the check, I decided to try adjusting the eccentric just a wee bit. So I loosened it back up and I adjusted it one more time, just rotated it slightly so that it would put the valve in a little bit different position. And I think I've got it now because the, the cross check with the both of them at for, uh, f uh, front and rear dead center, it is just cracking so bo in both directions. So I think I've got it set up okay now. Obviously we'll know more when we actually get it some air, get it to run on air, which we're pretty close. Um, but I'm going to call this good for now, and we will start working on the piping. So thanks everybody, I appreciate this, and uh, maybe I'll publish this video soon this week because I probably won't get to the piping um, for a little while, but we'll see.